What's the problem here? Does this Eevee hate me or something? Its friendship has to be high enough to evolve by now, and it's the middle of the day, so I should absolutely have an Espeon. Oh well, gotta get it eventually, so I'll just keep trying. See, that's what I thought to myself back in 2008 when I was playing my Pokemon Leaf Green every day, and I was mad that Eevee could not evolve. Of course, I know now that they decided to not implement in-game time in the Gen 1 remakes because the original Red and Blue didn't include them. And that didn't really affect the experience a ton, I just wasn't thrilled about it when I learned that. Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, on the other hand, do have in-game time, but if you still have any of these games today or have taken out a small loan to pick up a physical copy recently, you've probably seen this weird cryptic message on the start screen. Screen. Yeah, from the first day that I got my Pokemon Emerald, I was greeted by this too. Clock-based events will no longer occur. And there lies this double-edged sword that this mechanic brought to the third generation of games. Obviously, having time and timed events in-game was going to result in more content and more things to do, but it was also at a time where the cartridges required extra battery power to keep the clock active, and if it ever went out, the in-game time would freeze altogether. Everything was still fairly functional, but there was a decent amount of content that became totally inaccessible. And that's what I want to focus on here today. Over 10 years later, the Pokemon and the items that are in these weird states of limbo because of the Gen 3 in-game clocks. The passage of time specifically in the Gen 3 games has always been fascinating to me because they, unlike Gen 2, were in a good enough shape to function on their own, the battery was still needed to keep an eye on the clock. And this much later down the road, if you're playing physically, there's a good chance you spent entire playthroughs of Ruby, Sapphire, or Emerald with a totally frozen clock. So now there's this real-world boundary affecting the rarity of certain Pokemon and events in-game that may have even been completely hidden if you didn't know that they were there. And we're going to talk about all of them as we go on the journey with the Pokemon Lost to Time. Alright, so to start off here, we're going to dive into that first example I gave, with two of these Pokemon famously being Espeon and Umbreon. For me, these two are a couple of all-timers. They have simple and sleek designs, they've got mascot status from the GameCube games, and even kind of from Let's Go Eevee. They are 100% fan favorites. Everybody loves one of these two Pokemon. But they couldn't evolve, period. In Fire Red and Leaf Green at least, which is also kind of tough because the game has a clever way of doing a couple of timed events that we're going to come back to later, don't you worry. But the point right here is that these two Pokemon are simply unavailable, and this absolutely infuriated me as a kid, and it still does now. Espeon was on my dream team when I was a kid, and all I knew was that it needed friendship in the daytime. Maybe it was my punishment for having four flying types on my team at once, but I gave up on Eevee at level 96, and I'm still kind of mad about that. Okay, okay, but so what was the solution to this? If you just desperately wanted one of these Pokemon, they were all over the place in the GameCube games. They were the two starters you got in Colosseum, Espeon and Umbreon respectively, and then you got a low level Eevee as your starter in XD. And in XD, Eevee actually just needs an item to evolve. You give it the respective item, you get to choose, and it turns into your Eeveelution of choice. Probably as easy as it's ever been. But for all that, you're gonna need a GameCube, a GameCube link cable, GameCube games. Let's say you just have the Eevee that you got from the top of the Celadon City building, the gift Pokemon in Fire Red and Leaf Green. You're gonna have to trade that one over to the Hoenn games, and doing so also resets the friendship so you have all sorts of work to do. But even worse, if your in-game clock is frozen in the game that it gets traded to, it can still evolve, but only in the form that goes with the time that your clock froze at. That time never changes, and if that time is night, then I have terrible news for all the Espeon fans in the room. See, now that we've considered it a little bit more, I think this could just be viewed as an extremely minor oversight that just got worse as more of the game batteries died, but it really is odd how centralized these two were on the GameCube games just to be hardlocked in Fire Red and Leaf Green, and I feel like I can't be alone here. I wanted those Pokemon because they made them seem so cool in the GameCube games. There's that opening scene in the first battles in Colosseum that just goes nutso, and then you couldn't get them without multiple games and consoles in the remakes. So sure, statistically, this is a minor oversight, but I know plenty of people, myself included, that were so bummed out for all the steps that you would have to go through to get those Pokemon in Fire Red and Leaf Green. Another Pokemon that is affected in this way, and even has an overall area that gets affected with it too, is Snorun and Shoal Cave in the Hoenn games. This is that cave above Moss Deep City in Hoenn, and it might be best known for where you can catch a Sfeel, it's not super notable. 
But there's another Gen 3 Ice Pokemon that lives here too, in an area that I never actually got to see as a kid. So this cave is probably the biggest implementation of time in the Gen 3 games. It consists of two separate areas that alternate accessibility every six hours, so four times a day. Half of the time you can go down to this special ice room, and then the other half of the time it is blocked off by water, which allows you to go up to these upper caves. It has a tide thing going on. I was someone whose clock froze with the ice cave blocked off, so I never got in there or even knew that it existed. Let me tell you, I didn't even know that Snowrunt existed or evolved into Glalie for years because of this little issue, and I was shocked and overjoyed when I found the room and Snowrunt inside of it when I was playing Omega Ruby. And it's not as big of a deal as an entire Pokemon line, but there is an item that this area can lock you out of too, the Shell Bell. There's an old man that'll craft it for you out of Shoal Salts and Shoal shells having a tough time pronouncing that one but they were both exclusive to one of the caves areas it's a pretty decent item you do damage and you get a small return on investment kind of like a vampire item but i had no idea what it did like that's pretty good but this place created this whole mysticism for me with the item and i wanted nothing more than the shell bell and i had no idea what it did and it almost seemed like i wasn't supposed to have it Hopefully, if your game has to freeze, it does so while the ice area is active, because otherwise you can't catch Snorun. One of the Elite Four members has a Glalie, so you can at least know that the evolution line exists, but you're gonna have to get Snorun from a different game. Fortunately, a Snorun can be caught on the GameCube and then transferred over and then bred from there, and that's manageable, but I don't want to do all that. That's super frustrating. And it's just like, for years, I thought that Snorun was this almost mythical level rarity Pokemon that I was striving and striving to get only to learn when I was giving computer access that no it's caught here regularly you just have to have a working battery. So those two lines are probably as bad as this phenomenon goes but let's get into some of the nitty gritty of it all and look at smaller mechanics that might affect your day to day if you know what you're looking for. The Hoenn games do have a couple of daily events that will refresh based on the in-game clock, like at the good old Lily Cove department store, they have the daily lottery. You know, take this time right now to see if you won the lottery. You may have just won one of their incredible prizes and you don't know it yet. This lottery actually kind of rocks because if you get the right prize, you can get a second EXP share, which is extremely unusual in these older games, and I could see that coming in really handy if you needed one. But if something like the Pokemon lottery is a little too easy for you, then there's always the rarely if ever seen Mirage Island, which works pretty similarly. There's this old man in Pacifica Dog Town. Pacifica Dog? Pacifica Dog? You know, let me know about that one below. I've never known how to pronounce that. Pacifica Dog Town will let you know that he can see the island if any of the Pokemon in your party have a personality value matching his number. So both of these events generate a random number, which is 0 through 65,535. And then if you have a Pokemon that matches that random number, you get a prize. The lottery is way easier though, because it checks its random number against the ID number of every Pokemon you own, and you can get scaling benefits to that. The battery running dry in this case can honestly be a benefit, because the only thing that changes day by day is the RNG. So if you can somehow figure out what the number is, then you can game the system and win some prizes. Maybe even see Mirage Island. You know, I've never been. It's kind of a weird place. The only Pokemon in the grass is Why Not, and no, Why Not is not on the list, because you can get a free egg of one back in Lava Ridge Town. But as far as things that are actually exclusive, it is the only place in the entirety of Gen 3 where you can get the Lychee Berry, which has a really really good effect so it is actually great, is more importantly a fantastic segue into the best gen 3 timed event, farming. Farming for berries! I love to do berries in Pokemon. It's so simple, but when they give it the focus it deserves, it works so well. And this set of games is really where that happened. You're managing the individual plots around Hoenn, keeping inventory of your crops and how you're going to use them. All that made me feel like such a little industrialist. But the fun ended when I got that notification. And then after that, the berries are frozen like those scenes in Pokemon Mystery Dungeon where the clock is stopped and everything is frozen in time. For me, this one is the most crushing of all because there are eventual workarounds for all the other pokemon and events you know there's ways to get around the roadblocks but berry farming is just over when the battery dries out the plants are drying out i'm never gonna see them do their little berry dance again which is one of my favorite parts and it makes sense that you need in-game clock and time working to do berry farming but fire red and leaf green didn't have those at all and they still had berries and these are those clever methods that i was talking about earlier because they could still 
emulate some degree of the farming despite not having a clock. The remakes have an entire mechanic called recurring items that have items respawn in their home areas based on how many steps you've taken. And this is pretty cool for normal stuff like pokeballs and potions if you're really in a bind, but berries get the best here because you can't farm them any other way. You can dig a couple out of the trash on the boat, but that's it. However, in the Three Island Berry Forest, there's a pretty long list of berries that can appear in the ground that respond this way hidden along the forest. Some of them are way more common than others, but ultimately there's a lot of berries here that you can get that respawn as you take enough steps. And this concept just fills me with glee. I would, I would say mirth, even. I'm a kid running through the forest, picking fruit as I go to give to my Pokemon, and I am truly surrounded by beauty in this moment. And what a clever way to keep berries in without having the clock going. This of course begs the question why Eevee got left out in the rain, but I'm not gonna let that ruin my fun in the forest. Alright, and that's all I got on the shaky but still generally fun conventions of in-game time in the third generation of Pokemon games. Did you ever grapple with evolving an Eevee or maybe catching a Snorunt in a certain ice cave? Let me know. These are seriously some of my favorite games of all time that I have poured countless hours of play and study into, and I love being able to cover them in this ultra-focused capacity here so much. So if you made it this far, thank you so much, and if you want to support me and my ability to keep doing Doing this, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. I really, really appreciate it. That's all I got for now. Hopefully, some big stuff on the way. Appreciate y'all. Drew Michelle.